Hello and welcome. This is a physics tutorial video aimed at undergraduate physics students and any enthusiasts. In this video we will introduce the Fermat's principle, derive the Snell's law using it, and also discuss some applications. So, what is Fermat's principle? Fermat's principle, also referred to as the principle of least time, is a theory that describes the path a light beam would take in going from a point A to point B. It states that the actual path between two points taken by a beam of light is the one which is traversed in the least time. So let's think about this. Consider two points, let's call them A and B. We can draw many different paths from A to B. We could follow a straight line or we could travel through a way we want as shown in the diagram. We reach the same point, although the time taken is different. Clearly among the infinite number of different paths it is possible to take, the one traversed in the shortest time is a straight line, and a beam of light always tends to take the quickest path. Now, let's consider a brain teaser laid out by the renowned physicist Richard Feynman. In this analogy, we have a lifeguard standing at some point in the beach, and he sees a person who is calling out for help and is about to drown. He wants to get there as quickly as possible to save the guy. He could follow three different paths, which vary by their length and by the amount of time spent on sand and in water. Clearly, no matter how good a swimmer the lifeguard is, he would travel faster running on sand than swimming in water. So the question is, which of the three paths should he take? Should he go for the straight line, as the straight line is geometrically the shortest path between two points? Or should he aim to spend the least amount of time in water and take path three? Well, the answer is somewhere in between, so he should follow a path that is similar to path two. But why? Due to Fermat's principle of least time, the aim of the lifeguard is to take the quickest path and not the shortest one. The shortest path in this case is not the quickest one because there are two different mediums present in which the speed of the lifeguard is different. So the answer is not path one. The answer is not path three either because this time the length of the path has become too long and this slows down the lifeguard. Path two, which is a compromise between the two paths, is the optimal one. Light behaves in the exact same way when it travels in two different media, for example from a medium of lower to a medium of high refractive index. Time for doing some maths to investigate this behaviour and its consequences. We have a light ray going from air into water, from point A to B. As you can see, we have a path which is very similar to path 2 in our analogy, where as the light ray passes from a lower to a higher refractive index, it bends towards the normal. So the angle of incidence is greater than the angle of refraction. We know from Fermat's principle that light follows the path of least time. Our aim here is to consider the distance from A to B and also the speed of light in two media to optimize our path for time. So we will just assign some random variables to represent the distances and try to find the total distance. From A to O, the distance is square root A squared plus X squared, which is found using Pythagoras' theorem. And similarly, from O to B, the distance is as shown. From the distances, we find an expression for the time spent in the two media by assuming the speed in medium 1 is VI and the speed in medium 2 is VT. We sum these to find the total time. Well, Fermat's principle dictates us to minimize the time. In our previous discussion, we have discussed that a straight line is the shortest path between two points. So if the light ray was normal to the surface, it would have followed a straight line with no refraction at all. Therefore, if we minimize x, we minimize the path length and hence the time. So we take the derivative of t with respect to x and set it to zero. Going through the algebra, we obtain this simplified expression. We soon realize that the terms in the expression are equivalent to the sine of the angles. Perhaps the triangle will help you in understanding why. We then consider the definition of refractive index to express our equation in terms of the indexes instead of the velocities. And we finally obtain the Snell's law equation that we are all familiar with. We will now consider a light ray which travels from a medium of higher to lower refractive index. Well, it bends away from the normal. And if we keep increasing the angle of incidence, we observe that for a particular angle called the critical angle, the light is refracted along the boundary. And for any angle greater than this, we observe that all of the light is reflected back with zero transmission. And this phenomenon is used in many modern day equipment such as optical fibers. 
In an optical fiber, the outer layer called cladding has lower refractive index than the core and allows light to stay inside the fiber and not escape into the cladding. This plays a huge role in transmitting information using optical light, and therefore it has many applications. And that's all for our video. Thank you for watching.